Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Sun Zhu. Uh, I'm a graduated PhD student from Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. And now I'm working in Shopee Singapore, which is an e-commerce company. And this work is also funded by Shopee. Uh, so let's, uh, let me go through the following five parts to introduce my presentation. And as we know, by connecting various type of information related to items into a unified space, knowledge graph helps to develop uh, much insights on the recommendation problems uh, compared with the uh, single user item interaction data. Uh, and knowledge graph has proven to be effective to enhance the recommendation performance. So let's say a running example. Here is a knowledge graph in the movie domain, and uh, it contains users, movies, actors, genres, directors, and also the users can read the movies and also the movies can be characterized by different genres, uh, like drama or war. And also we have the acting and directing relations. And this knowledge graph is quite useful to infer the user's preference towards the movies. Uh, so let's take Bob and the Saving Private Ring as an example. And we may infer Bob's preference towards the movie uh, by the following path. The first is that, uh, from Bob to the terminal and to drama to the saving private ring. So this path captures some semantics, uh, indicating that Bob may prefer the movies that belong to the drama uh, ca uh, ca ca categories. And the second path is uh, from Bob to the terminal and to Steven Spielberg finally reach the saving private ring. So we may guess that maybe Bob are, interested, are very interested in the movies that are directed by Steven Spielberg. And the two passes captures different semantics uh, can, you know, uh, can uh, explain the reasons why uh, Bob will have some interest in saving privacy. But uh, the two different passes may have different importance on Bob's decision uh, towards the saving private ring. Uh, so from the running examples, uh, the, uh, it highlights that different passes connecting a same user and a movie pairs carries the relations of different semantics. And also the different paths will have different importance in characterizing the user's taste towards the items. Uh, so to achieve a better exploration of the knowledge graph, uh, we, we should not only capture the semantics of different passes, but also we have to distinct the silence of different, different paths uh, on user's preference towards items. And although there are a lot of existing works, they leverage the knowledge graph to do the recommendations. While they suffer from several limitations, for example, some of them are raised on the handcraft features. Uh, they predefine some metal passes and then extract the metal pass from the knowledge graph. Uh, and further, uh, they merge the metal pass based similarity into, for example, the metric factorization model. Uh, and also the other, uh, the other works uh, named the uh, uh, knowledge graph embedding based method, and they ignore the uh, semantic relations of entities that are connected by a pass. They only consider the direct linked uh, no nodes. So uh, therefore to address those issues, we propose a recurrent neural network embedding based method. Uh, our method aims to automatically mine all the qualified paths that contains different uh, semantics. And also we encode all the passes through a batch of recurrent networks. Finally, we discriminate the importance of the pass through a pooling layer. And here is the overall framework of our proposed model. It is composed of three comp uh, modulars. Uh, semantic pass mining, recurrent network batch, and silence determination. And later I will go through the details. Uh, and now I will uh, introduce some related works. And there are a lot of works uh, to leverage the knowledge graph to address uh, the, uh, to improve the performance of recommendation. Uh, they can be generally classified into three types, uh, graph-based method, metapass-based method, and also the graph embedding-based method. And for the graph-based method, normally they are uh, based on the random work process, which are very uh, easily biased to the popular and the central, central entities in the knowledge graph. And besides, they only consider the topological structures of knowledge graph. They ignore the semantic uh, information encoded in the knowledge graph. And the second one is the metapass-based method, delivery the information of the items of users connected by the metapass. And this, uh, this method, they you know, relates on the quantity and the quality of the handcraft metapasses. 
And the third one is the knowledge graph embedding based method. And the most recent uh, uh, proposed method named the collaborative knowledge, knowledge based embedding. And this method, they learn the better item representations by capturing the entity semantics encoded in the knowledge graph. And while it ignores the relations of entities connected by a path, uh, that's it, they only consider the directed, directly linked uh, nodes in the knowledge graph. Uh, so in contrast, our goal is to exploit the heterogeneous information encoded in the knowledge graph to learn high quality user and item representations. Uh, and uh, as a whole, our, pro uh, our proposed approach, recurrent uh, knowledge graph embedding can automatically mine the semantic passes between entity pairs, and then it encodes different passes with a batch of recurrent networks. And, uh, and finally, they determine the path silence uh, through a pooling operation. And now I will go through the details of different modulars of our proposed method. The first one is the semantic path mining. Uh, this modular aims to you know, find the connected path between a user and uh, uh, item pairs. Uh, there should be uh, a lot of, you know, huge number of passes connected a uh, user and item pairs. So to, you know, improve the model efficiency, we designed two different strategies to reduce the number of the passes. Uh, the first one is that we only select the user to item passes, as our goal is to recommend uh, 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 items to users. And the second strategy is that we only select the path with the length constraint. As previous work showed, uh, longer paths will generate some remote neighbors, uh, thus to you know, introduce some noise. So we will uh, only consider the path length with the specific numbers. And the second modular is the recurrent network batch. And here, uh, from the first, okay, okay, from the first uh, uh, modular is the semantic path mining, we get multiple passes. And uh, different, uh, we, get diff uh, we get multiple passes with different pass lines. And in this modular, the recurrent network batch, we uh, encode different passes into a batch of recurrent networks. Uh, and for the embedding layers, we encode each entities in the path. And through the attention gate layers, we control the information flow to learn the path influence on the user's preference toward the items. Uh, finally, uh, for, the, uh, for the silence determination parts, uh, because we learn a lot of, in, uh, we have a lot of connected paths, we learn the hidden state of the path, uh, path influence, uh, and different paths may have different impacts. So we add a pooling layer to select the most important features. Uh, finally, we uh, use a fully connected layer to uh, quantify the relationships between the items and the users. Here is our model optimi uh, optimization, and here is the objective function of our model. BCE loss is the banner cross entropy, and RIG cap is the estimated ratings for user I on item G. And we use the two public data sites, movie lines of a million and a year of data site. Here is some statistic information. And also we compare with several state-of-the-art methods, most popular, uh, BPR matrix factorization, neural uh, connect, uh, collaborative filtering, factorization machine, and also several state-of-the-art knowledge graph-based recommendation methods. Uh, here I show some, some of the results. Uh, some of the results. The first one is we investigate the, the effects of the pass length. And from the figure we can see that as the pass length increases, the performance decreases. That means uh, uh, maybe the shorter, the longer pass will you know, generate some uh, remote neighbors, thus introduce some noise. And this is the effects of the pooling operations. We use the max pooling and average pooling uh, to, to investigate uh, which pooling method is more efficient. And from the results, we can see that the average pooling you know, outperforms the uh, max pooling, uh, which also you know, supports our intuitions that the user's preference towards items is the combination of the uh, of heterogeneous factors. And finally is the results of, our, um, of all the comparison method. And uh, uh, from here, we can see that our proposed method consistently outperform other uh, method. So to conclude, we proposed a knowledge graph embedding framework, uh, which learns the semantic re uh, representations of the entities and the entity relations encoded in the knowledge graph. So for the future work, we plan to intend the knowledge graph embedding method by considering the taxonomy of the entity types in the knowledge graph. 
so here I, I want to, I would like to acknowledge this work is funded by uh, Shopee Singapore. So that's all my presentation. Thanks for your attention. Thank, thank you so much for the speech. Um, do we have questions? Chavez is going there. So, Hello, uh, um, thanks so much for the, oh, sorry, you go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So, uh, very quick question. Um, so, this knowledge graph-based um, um, uh, um, recommendation, um, your, um, are you uh, similar to the session-based, or this is also uh, personalized on the user level? Uh, you mean this one is a kind of uh, can can this um, apply uh, to the session based? Uh, right now, this is session based. Uh, now it's not a session based. We just consider all the you know all the user item interactions because for the user item interactions we have the time steps. So we just order the item sequence by the time steps. We consider all the interactions not session based. But I think it can be adapted to the session based recommendation. So you are considering. Um, uh, so your recommendation is. Um, can consider the user, is considering user's uh, preference. Uh, yeah, it's personalized, yeah. Okay, cool. thank you. Okay, thank you. Hello, Hello. here. Yeah. Um, so it, it's unclear to me that uh, the graph is a sequence and I'm not sure why you're using a recurrent neural network on, on that step versus, for example, a graph convolutional network. Can you convince me that uh, RNN is a good choice there? Oh yeah, here, uh, I, can, I can explain your uh, questions here. Uh, because, have a moment, oh here. Uh, and here from the semantic path mining, you can see that uh, there are a lot of paths connecting to, uh, connecting a user item pairs. And the path has different lenses. So, you know, RNN is more flexible to, you know, to uh, handle with the uh, the uh, various number of inputs. So we just uh, choose RNN to model our, you know, uh, pass. You ha have you tried with uh, uh, using a convolutional neural net instead? Um, of uh, uh, I never try. Uh, I actually I have tried new uh, CNN to model uh, the uh, knowledge graph, but not in not in this method. I try it uh, in another way, but not related to this work. Um, okay. But uh, I just uh, treat you know the all the items and its attributes as a matrix, and uh, from the matrix I, I consider the matrix like an um, image, and then I uh, use it as input into the CNN. Uh, but I, never, uh, I haven't got some uh, better results till now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's thank the speaker again.